Father, I come to present myself to you, a living sacrifice. What you do is so far beyond what the natural can do. So I present myself to you that as you spoke through Jesus, you will speak through me. I love being like him. We all do, Father. We worship you and praise you. We are so grateful for the depth of love that you have for all of us. Thank you. Thank you, oh God. Amen, amen, and amen. Praise God. Today, it was during the week that God gave me a message, an opening, more so than anything else. My eyes were open to the power and the meaning of his word. Scriptures that I've read over and over over and over but then God gave us something else an opening a spiritual opening of our minds to his word and what his word does and I, I believe that what God is doing in this message today is is this, I want you to be strong in the midst of darkness. Amen. And that is, that is, it is going to be the first time I ever gave a message like that. But here's some things, here are some things that the Lord gave to me. The Gospel of John, and you feel free to go there yourself. The Gospel of John, and verse, chapter 17, and verse 16 to 21, I'm in the amplified uh, version of it. This is <clears throat> the night before the Lord Jesus is crucified. And he's giving a message to his disciples, and he's giving a message to us as well. Time does not bind the word of God. It serves the word of God. Amen. And this is, this is a scripture that um, I meditated on uh, for many, many days. And the more you get into it, the more that you meditate a word of God, it begins to activate inside of you, in your spirit. Not our minds, but our spirits. And boy, is that different. Amen. And here is what Jesus said. He's speaking to the Father and to his disciples. And he's saying about his disciples, they are not of the world. The worldly belong to the world, just as I, Christ, am not of the world. Sanctify them, Father. Consecrate, separate them for yourself. That's us he's talking about. And make them holy by the truth. Your word is truth. It never changes. I don't care what the enemy tries to throw out there. His truth is not going to change. 
That, that's, he will do anything to try to mess with the way we think in our walking with God. Don't let him do that. Rebuke him in the name of Jesus. He goes on, Jesus goes on to say, verse 18, Father, just as you sent me into the world, I also have sent them into the world. And he's speaking about those 12 apostles at the time. And yes, one of them is, is going to be the bad guy. And so for their sake <clears throat> and on their behalf, I sanctify, dedicate, consecrate myself that they also may, may be sanctified, dedicated, consecrated, made holy in the what? Truth. The truth, the word. The word of God transforms our inner being. Amen. <clears throat> he goes on to say, Neither for these alone do I pray. It is not for their sake only that I make this request, but also for all those who will ever come to believe in, trust in, cling to, rely on me through their teaching. That they all may be one. This is beautiful. He's speaking to Father here. That they all may be one. Just as you, Father, are in me and I in you, and this is where it gets super duper good, that they also may be one in us, so that they also may be one in us, so that the world may believe and be convinced that you, Father, have sent me. And that's, that's how he was exposed to the world at that time. It's because there was never him that was speaking. Well, it was him speaking, but it was the Father giving him the word to speak. And he does the same with us all. He gives us the same. And it, it, makes, it, it always causes a movement, a, a, a movement of the Spirit of God to those who listen. They may not receive it, but they'll feel it. There are some who will receive it because, wow, I've never heard God's word like that before. But that's what he does. <clears throat> and the title of this message is The Deep Expression of God's Love to Us. And here are, here's another uh, pre- <clears throat> pre-scripture before we get into uh, the message. In Ephesians <clears throat> chapter 3, in verses 20 and 21, <clears throat> this again is about us uniting in Christ. Now to him by... <clears throat> in consequence of the action of God's power that is at work within us, is able to carry out God's purpose and do superabundantly, far over and above all that we dare ask or think infinitely beyond our highest prayers, desires, thoughts, hopes, or dreams. That's the power of God. Guess who he's in? You and me. <laughs> you know what, you all? And this is something I've done for a long time. Uh, and I, I'm not going to tell you how long because you, you, may, you may not want me to come up here. <laughs> no, just kidding. Okay, where am I at? It is, in prayer time, oftentimes, I would pray towards heaven. And Holy Spirit let me know, what are you doing that for? Your Father is right here. Christ is right here. Holy Spirit is right here. Quit looking up and look down. Yes, Lord. Amen. 
And, and so <clears throat> there's a greater awakening within us when we come to realize, yes, Christ is in us. Christ is in me. And all that Christ is, as we are in him, we have all that he has. We can operate in the great power of the Lord God Almighty. And I think he's bringing this up, you all. <clears throat> Most of us are old enough to remember when 501c3 started out. I, me, personally, I thought that was a good thing. But there was some really ugly, evil stuff hidden. <clears throat> and it was to separate, listen, you all, it's the enemy who does it. Get Christ out of the way so I can do my thing. Ephesians 6, 12, for we wrestle not against flesh, but against these fallen spirits, these spirits of, of Satan. They, it appears what he uses, you know, as God, how God uses us. Satan uses others who don't know Christ. And then, you know, sometimes just new believers, they don't know. And it's a growth process, you all. That's just the truth of it. So there's not a single one of us who can beat on the other. Amen. We grow in the Lord Jesus Christ. And so <clears throat> it is pretty evident that Satan has a plan to disrupt God's own plan. But the scriptures that we're going to go through today, we're going to take our stand in Christ. The power is in Christ. The way is in Christ. The power is in Christ. Second Corinthians 5, 17. If any man be in Christ, they are brand new creation, created in Christ Jesus. Amen. We are in oneness with him. We don't have to sweat and try to bring up something of the word of God. Just go through Christ. Go through him. He always followed the Father. Whenever he spoke, he was speaking the words that the Father put in him. And we can do the same. Amen. And you all, I've been at it, but I've not gotten to the finish line. But I'm still running. I still got my spirit shoes on. <laughs> Because the devil is trying to overcome America. And we go back to September 26, 2021, was it? 2020, one of those two. And America was given the chance to all of us Christians to repent before God our sins. And if we should do that, then he would restore our nation. And we satisfied God that day. And he is restoring this nation. Always remember, once again, Satan has children, Christ has, has children. They don't know it. Those people, they don't even know it. Some of them do, but most of them don't. And... Again, Satan wants to silence the word of God. But we're not going to do that. We're not going to do it. They tried to do that to who? Jesus. Uh-huh. They tried to kill him 24 times and failed. 
And the same will happen for us. If we are in obedience to God, you all, he will put a fortress around us. You'll find that in, in Psalm 91. It, it, and it's very, very sure. And, and I love the last part of, of, of Psalm 91 because God speaks to us so lovingly soft and tells us about how pleased he is with us walking in obedience to him and that how that he will help us. And so we know that we have the enemy who wants this new world order. It's scriptural. It's been there for 2,000 years. But now, it, apparently, it's coming to reality. But God says it's not going to happen until I have had this last final revival and that I have <clears throat> given my children the message to deliver. Not only that, I give them my power, once again, my power. Luke 10, 19, behold, I give you the authority to trample on serpents and on scorpions and over all the power of the enemy. And here, the last part, I love this part, and they shall not hurt you by any means. I won't let them touch you, saith the Lord. And we say, amen. amen. And here's an add-on that will encourage us. Back here in Proverbs, Proverbs is quite the book. Of course, they all are. But Proverbs 18 and verse 17 I think it's seven. No, 21, excuse me. This happens each and every day, you all. Listen. Death and life happens every day. Death and life are in the power of the tongue. And they who indulge in it shall eat the fruit of it, <clears throat> excuse me, for life or for death. What our words speak out of Christ our Savior, life appears, healing appears, deliverance appears. All of that is in Christ, and we, Christ is in us, and we are in him. We have to grow in the knowledge of the power of Christ in us and quit trying to think that I've got to do this and I got to do that. It's not us. It's Christ in us. Amen. Christ in us. Which is going to lead us to our <laughs> we're friends. <laughs> lead us to these are just some awesome things. Hallelujah. This is the Apostle Paul. They're in the city of Ephesus. They have grown there in the midst of a, a, a demonic temple. And there are those who have heard the message <clears throat> of salvation. And it really pleased the Apostle Paul that they were so hungry for the word of God. And he says here, for this reason, because I have heard of your faith, the message got around. Because I have heard of your faith in the Lord Jesus and your love toward all the saints, the people of God. And I do not cease to give thanks for you, making mention of you in my prayers. For I always pray to the God of our Lord Jesus Christ, the Father of glory. By the way, the glory of God is in us because the glory of God is in Christ Jesus and we in him. 
we're a lot higher spiritually than we thought. Than we thought. (laughs) And I myself am taking my stand with the Lord because it's been probably a couple years ago. All of the negative things that I was hearing, I didn't like it, but did not exercise Christ in me and the word of his voice to snuff out the plan of the enemy. And that's what he wants. But God stepped in, going back to scripture, for I always pray to the God of our Lord Jesus Christ, the Father of glory, that he may grant us a spirit of wisdom, and he has. We could go back to Ephesians 1, 3, and we'll find that that's already been given to us, the spirit of wisdom and revelation of insight into mysteries and secrets in the deep, intimate knowledge of him. (sighs) Praise God. Well, there is Ephesians 1, 8 to prove what, what the prayer was. The Lord lavished upon us in in every kind of wisdom and understanding, practical insight, and produce. That came with Christ. We are in Christ. Christ is in us. We are in him. The greatest power in the entire universe resides in us. And what we need to really apply ourselves to doing is to be in him, to speak through the spirit of Christ in us and out of our mouths we speak it. Amen. I'm a little slow today, you all. This is because it's, it's new in thought and, and uh, uh, presentation. All right. <laughs> Hallelujah. In 1 Corinthians 2, 16. For who has known, this is a question to us, or understood the mind, the counsels, and purposes of the Lord so as to guide and instruct him and give him knowledge. We can't teach him. (laughs) But we have the mind of Christ. Amen. Christ is in us. We are in Christ. You all, if it wasn't for Christ in us, we'd still be dead. We'd be dead. Uh huh. But we have the mind of Christ, the Messiah, and do hold the thoughts, feelings, and purposes of his heart. We're walking in Christ. We are learning to do so because we have meditated on the word. We have to meditate on it, y'all, because it's super, it goes beyond the natural world. That's just all there is to it. The things of God, the power of God, all of that goes beyond the natural world where we can be stuck, where we can try to deal with the evil world from a natural standpoint. It's not going to work. But we exercise the word of God as we speak and take authority over it. And that's why the devil doesn't want us out here, Mm y'all. Moving on. Philippians 2.5. Let this same attitude, this is basically what we've said, we say it again, the Lord is telling us. Let this same attitude and purpose and humble mind 
to tell us to be humble is to tell us to get out of the way of God's word. Let this same attitude and purpose and humble mind be in you, which was in Christ Jesus. It was, he always spoke what the Father spoke. Always. Let him be our example in humility. Ephesians 1, 17 to 18. For I always pray to the God, this is Apostle Paul again speaking. For I always pray to the God, our Lord Jesus Christ, the Father of glory, that he may grant you a spirit of wisdom and revelation. Again, we're over this again of insight into mysteries and secrets in the deep and intimate knowledge of him. Those things are in him. His way. We want to be in his way and bring forth that mighty power of God. By having the eyes of our heart flooded with light so that you can know and understand the hope to which he has called us. He wants us to share the good news with those who are around us. All of us can share the good news with our friends. Sometimes God will move up on you <laughs> before you know it. I, I was in uh, uh, Walmart and ended up sharing the gospel with, with this, this guy. And the guy got saved. When it was all over, I'm thinking to the Lord, I say, Father, I hope you just do it that way all the time. <laughs> I don't want to be in your way, oh God. I don't. It is meditating in the word day and night that will get us into that position that Christ is in. Got to meditate, y'all. I'm telling you, the word of God is way beyond the word of the natural world. Here we are confirmed about the glory of God being in us. Again, the Apostle Paul. It was to this end that God called you through our gospel so that you and I may obtain and share in the glory of our Lord Jesus Christ, the Messiah. Again, the glory of of God is in the Christ who is in us and we are in him therefore we are in the glory and that's another thing I have conversations outside of the church talking with individuals and it's like <laughs> it's like I'm somebody honestly and I'm just all but scratching my head. But because I have meditated on the word, it is taking place in me, and I don't always recognize that it's taking place. Now I know. And it's good to know that Chester is not in the way, but Christ in Chester is. Ooh, ooh. Amen. Romans 8, 18. And you all, I, I would strongly encourage you to take all of these scriptures because they're telling us that the power of God to save this world and to change this world is in Christ in us and we in Christ. And you have to meditate on it because it is really way beyond the natural. 
the natural mind. That's why we are told, be ye transformed in our minds. Let this mind of Christ be also in you and I. But what of that? For I consider that the sufferings of this present time, this present life, are not worth being compared with the glory that is about to be revealed to us and in us and for us and conferred on us because we are growing in Christ. We are living in dark times, but we don't have to let the enemy walk all over this country. God has given it to us. And we have Christ in us, we in him, that can rebuke all of these evil spirits and break them down. And, and I can tell by the news that there are people who are believing exactly what God says and this stuff is falling apart. Satan is not going to super sin, go beyond Christ. It ain't going to happen. But he needs us out there doing just as Jesus did. And we can do it, you all. But I'm telling you, we're going to have to meditate on the word because it is beyond the natural mind. And the mind of Christ is in the word of God. It's there. Verses 19 to 23. And so that you can know and understand what is the, I'm praying that you may know and understand what is the immeasurable and unlimited and surpassing greatness of his power in who? Boy, that makes you feel good. Knowing that we don't have to search for that power in ourselves because a lot of people do our power don't amount to much but the power of God oh boy get out of the way amen because what he says is going to take place so <clears throat> and surpassing greatness of his power in us and for us who believe as demonstrated in the working of his mighty strength, which the Apostle Paul was doing that. He was doing that, healing the sick, casting out devils, amen, uh, getting bitten by snakes and not dying because of the power of God, Christ, in him and he in Christ. Amen. He goes on to say, which he exerted in Christ when he raised him from the dead and seated him at his own right hand in the heavenly places. What God has done is taught us through his word how to do the same things as Jesus Christ did. When he had finished his work, and he said that on the cross, he few days later, he was caught up into heaven. And now we are recipients of what God has given us to do, gifted us in his word. And so when he exert, which he exerted in Christ when he raised him from the dead and seated him at his own right hand in the heavenly places, far above all rule and authority and power and dominion and every name that is named above every title that can be conferred, not only in this age and in this world, but also in the age and the world which are to come, which he was talking about us. Our time has come. We, don't, we can stop Satan from running over our schools. Right. Amen. Our universities. All of those different things that he's trying to do, you ought to take us down. Verse 22, and God has put all things under our, uh, his feet 
and appointed him the universal and supreme head of the church, Christ, a headship exercised throughout the church. So right now, and this is my prayer to the Lord, Father, I want Christ to be speaking to us through me. That is my desire. That was my desire, and I prayed it more than once. <laughs> I want you, Christ, to speak to us through me. And they do the same, because we all can do the same, all of us. The God Almighty is in us. So, which is his body, the fullness of him who fills all in all. For in that body lives the full measure of Christ who makes everything complete and who fills everything everywhere with himself in us. And this is basically what God said about John. For out of Christ's fullness, his abundance, we have all received, all had a share, and we were all supplied with one grace after another and spiritual blessing upon spiritual blessing and even favor upon favor and gift heaped upon gift to us. Just stay humble. It's awesome what God has given us. And we follow the discipleship of Christ Jesus. Far above all rule and authority, completing on verse 20. And dominion and every name that is named. Above every title that can be conferred, conferred. Not only in this age and in this world. But also in the age and the world which are to come. We are going to be taken up into heaven, you all. And we're going to be crying over some things that we could have done but didn't because we didn't know. We didn't know of that position of Christ in us and us in him. And so they were saddened. We're going to be caught up one of these days. We're going to have a, a body that doesn't ache, that doesn't turn gray. Hallelujah. <laughs> There's wonderful days ahead. And there are wonderful days taking place even today. So be subject to God. Resist, resist the devil. Stand firm against him and he will flee from you. You take and I take the name of Jesus and tell him to shut up and get out of the way. And you know what will happen? The word of God. The word of God is powerful. Just the word of God is powerful. When Jesus comes back in that, that awesome, awful uh, war that's going to take place at the end of the seven years of tribulation. And when he shows up above Satan and all of his fallen uh, angels and all of that, there wasn't pulling out no sword, none of that. All that Jesus will do is say to them, go sit down. And that's what they will do. You and I have the authority of Christ in us, and we meditate on that word enough until it becomes faith to us, and we find ourselves doing the same things that Jesus did when he was here. Amen. 
I wrote something down, something else down. Okay, John 4, 7. You and I have been given the power to rule the devil, Satan. I resist you, Satan, in the name of Jesus. You flee from me. It's God's power that he gave to me that you will obey and go. Christ in us. This message is not delivered to, to make us non-believers, none of that, or that will cause us to, to not make it to heaven, none of that. This is for us to do as Jesus did. We don't have to put up with all of this mess that's going on. I have a plan for Emporia, Kansas, and I'm not going to share it. I'm going to stay humble. She does that a lot, Miss Linda. And it works. The Christ in us, you all. The Christ in us. And he's telling us you don't have to put up with the devil. We frighten him. He definitely frightens, is frightened by Christ. That is why he's trying to sit churches down, close their doors, all of that. If I can just get them out of the way, I can move all of Revelation out of the way and kill as many people as I want. But he's not going to accomplish that. Greater is he that is in us and that he that is in the world is the enemy. Bam. Take that. Did you get something out of that, you all? Praise God. Praise God. It is a tremendous blessing to know that we don't have to put up with what is going on in this nation. But we have to grow there, you all. And you're going to find out that it takes time because our minds are rooted in the, all of these years that we've been in this world and how we dealt with certain difficulties and, and things, evil things. As we meditate upon the word of God and it takes root in us, we can tell the enemy, scat. In the name of Jesus, he can do it. Amen.